All right, so here are two technical results that we can establish using the mean value theorem. Um, the first one probably seems familiar. You probably feel like you already know that this is true, but uh, not exactly. What you already know is that if a function is constant, then the derivative is zero. This is going the other direction. If you know that the derivative is zero, we can be sure that the function is constant. So in other words, um, constant functions are the only ones whose derivative is equal to zero everywhere. Okay? Um, how do we prove something like this? Well, what we can do is we choose any two numbers, x1 and x2, with x1 smaller than x2, that are in our interval i. Okay. So we know, what do we know? We know that f is differentiable on this interval. Why do we know that? We know the derivative is zero, right? Um, so if, if we're telling you that the derivative is equal to zero, then implicitly we're telling you that that derivative must exist, right? It has to exist before it can equal to zero. Um, but remember, we also have a theorem saying that at any point where the derivative exists, you know your function is continuous, right? And, and we also know that the derivative exists at these two points, x1 and x2, and everywhere in between, right? Because x1 and x2 are, are in this interval, right? Um, maybe to be, to be careful, we should say open interval, so we don't have to worry about these being endpoints. Um, but um, we also know then that f is continuous on the corresponding closed interval. Okay, well that means that by the mean value theorem, if I do f of x2 minus f of x1 over x2 minus x1, that has to equal f prime of c, right, for some c between x1 and x2. But our derivative is identically zero. So f, whatever c is, it doesn't matter what c is, we know that f prime of c has to be zero. Okay? All right. So multiply by x2 minus x1, clear the denominators. What do you get? f of x2 minus f of x1 equals zero. Uh, or in other words, f of x1 is equal to f of x2. All right. Um, at this point, we should probably make some concluding remarks. Uh, since we're doing this on video, I'll just say them out loud and save some ink. Um, what does this tell you? f of x1 equals f of x2. Well, we chose any two numbers, x1 and x2, in our interval. The only condition we put on them is that x1 should be smaller than x2, so that this interval makes sense, right? Left endpoint should be smaller than the right endpoint. Okay. So x1 and x2 are arbitrary. They could be anything. And what we have is that no matter which x1 and x2 you choose, f will have the same value at both, right? So what we could do is we could now fix that x1 and then let x2 be any other number in the interval. And we're going to have that f at that number has to have the same value as f of at, at x1, right? And so the only way you can guarantee that your function has the same value everywhere is if it's constant. In fact, that's really what it means for it to be constant, right? It has the same value everywhere. Okay, so that tells us that our function is constant on the interval, right? So if the derivative is zero, function has to be constant. All right, um, that leads us to the second one, part B, okay? How do we do that? Um, stay tuned, we'll look at it in the next video.